One, two, three, four, running five, six, seven, one, and two, three, and four, step five, and six, and seven, and eight, one, and two, double V rest, four, plie five, six, Valentino seven, Valentino Sacchetti eight, is a first soloist with the Royal Ballet, has been a uh, first soloist for many years. He's a really valued member of the company, a great versatile dancer that's done many roles from the virtuosic to the character roles as in, you know, Lesko and Mercutio, roles that he excels in. So he's a wonderful member of the company, but has also showed that he's interested in choreography and for many years has been part of the DraftWorks program. So he has been nurtured under that and then has also done work outside of the company, so with New English Ballet and also made some dance films. So what's very interesting about Valentino is that he loves classical ballet. He, ex he excels in, in delving into the beauty of it and to try and make something new and finding new ways of presenting the classical technique. And uh, in this unbelievable time of the pandemic, uh, I was trying to think of ways of getting the company to all dance and of course when we were doing our sort of gala programs it was very easy to have our big stars dancing pas de deux and, and even our first soloists and soloists but I was worried about the young dancers in the company who have had really a very tough year and so came up with this idea of let's maybe put a ballet together that uses them and incorporates the younger members of the company. And so I asked if he would choreograph a short piece of about 10 minutes and I thought we could show it at uh, World Ballet Day and then maybe it would have a life at some point uh, moving on. As with all things, nothing is set in stone at this time and so we, we did actually create it for World Ballet Day and showed a rehearsal which went very, very well. And then we were just about to open a series of, of performances that were really gala-like in their presentation when um, the lockdown happened again. And so we knew we weren't going to be able to perform consecutive performances with members of the audience in, in the building. So I went to Valentino and said, why don't we try and get this together and make this happen for the second streaming of our gala performances. So within weeks, we uh, rehearsed it more. Uh, Valentina and myself went online and bought the costumes or for, you know, from uh, dancewear companies and, uh, and made it happen. And it was a really special moment to open that program that was being beamed live around the world with all the youngest dancers in the company and with this, you know, young choreographer making his debut on the main stage. So I was thrilled and the reaction from it was really good and people really loved seeing his work, his choreography, the way he uses the music, his musicality is really strong and the way he really tailored the work for the dancers he was working with. So when we came to coming out of lockdown yet again, I thought, wouldn't it be fantastic for our last program in a series of three, which is really showing the breadth as much as we can at this time of the company. So we had one that was celebrating the most contemporary of choreographers with 21st century choreographers, then looking at Balanchine and Robbins. And then the final program was a nod to our history. And we finished with the third act of Sleeping Beauty. And it is our 90th year, so I thought, what better then to celebrate with a new ballet, really reveling in the classical technique. And so we've extended it. Valentino, we've got a costume designer, as in Jean-Marc Puisson, who is also looking at the set design as well, in, in the staging of it, and with lighting by Simon Benison. And uh, so we have a new one-act ballet by Valentino Sacchetti. So his debut, uh, making a, a full one act ballet for the main stage with an audience and we're really looking forward to that coming to life. I've already seen it in rehearsal in the studio and it's looking really strong. Working with such young dancers that some of them have just joined and some of them have joined the company, you know, maybe a couple of years ago. Um, it's very exciting on one hand because I can see they're eager, they're ambitious and they're obviously hungry for, for doing more and, and, and often uh, they don't get to do uh, 
uh, a lot. So I, th I, I think they understand and I understand how important this piece is for them as it is for me as a choreographer. I'm going to try to use what they're very good at because I think uh, versatility comes with experience later on. I think I'm trying to cast them uh, based on their individual talents, you know, and try to, uh, to start with to make them work uh, within, within their comfort zone and, and sort of uh, reinforce and, and really build that before then, uh, I'm, before developing them in the future in their versatility. So I, I do feel like I've cast them really specifically on their, on their talents and there are some dancers which are very, very young and are going to be doing uh, the, uh, the main roles or a uh, soloist roles and and I think it's again it, I think it's they, they're up for the challenge and I'm definitely up for uh, developing them in this short couple of months period uh, I think it's exciting for everybody and and I, I can already see while I'm rehearsing the the, the development I think they, they're just they're, they're just so much talent in this group of dancers and you just need to just open the floodgate a little bit and they, they, they will deliver as they are delivering right now. Designing for dance is, is an extra challenge for a designer because we have to fit our ideas visually onto a very challenging um, canvas, which is a human body doing something very extreme, particularly with neoclassical dance and ballet. So building costumes and making costumes is not so much about what they look like. That's, of course, what it ends up being about. But the whole journey there is very much about how we're going to make this and how practical it's going to be, not only for the dancing, but also for the maintenance of it. Um, when you work for theater and for opera, the garment is going to have a lot less stress than a dance garment will have, even before we hit the premiere. Rehearsals, laundering, all of this is really a, a huge consideration to take when you start to make something. The decisions are always informed by a huge amount of parameters when we do dance costumes. And I think, of course, what's very, very important with dance is to, for a designer, is when you get to the fitting room, to keep in mind your design and what you're trying to achieve, but to very much look at the dancer in front of you. Because one idea might translate very differently from one body to the other. And it's one of the great thing of working with a company like the Royal Ballet, which is very diverse, um, people come from very different parts of the world, so as a designer, one idea, even if you were to reproduce the same costume, it would have possibly to be addressed differently, for sure in terms of proportion. But sometimes you have to completely revise the design. Uh, if you can do that, if it's a one-off, um, then you can do this, change a color, maybe change a fabric, change something. And that's a process that always excites me, because I consider that my work for dance comes in three-thirds usually, there's the conception of it and that's either in my mind or collaborating with a choreographer or a director. Then there's the actual design part of it and then translating this with my costume supervisor and choosing fabrics and talking to the makers, this whole collaborative aspect, working with the dye shop. So there's a huge amount of people there involved already. That's the second part. And I think that's the third part for me is the fitting and whatever we have when we arrive in this third moment, I don't think we should throw it all off, of course not, but I think it should remain 
always a question and always a, a discussion and a conversation with the person in front of us. And that I find very exciting. Um, and it's this entire arc which, for me, makes costume design what it is specifically for dance. young dancers really represent the future. They represent the future of the company. So to me, I saw them as sort of the wind of change. So I couldn't call it the wind of change because the wind of change is a famous song by Scorpion. <laughs> so I decided to kind of dig a little deeper and I found uh, solace, which is uh, in the Greek mythology because what's great about Greek mythology, and this is the reason why often it's used in ballet is because it personifies context. So there is a god of wisdom, a god of mischief, there is a god of the sun, the moon, and so there are also the animoids. The animoids are the gods of winds. They are often depicted as the north, south, west, east winds. This is always a tough time for a choreographer that's developing and emerging from the company, especially when they're a dancer, and especially when they're like Valentino or a first soloist. So you've got to balance the two jobs, really. And so, of course, in, these, uh, in this program, he's been the first program. He was in uh, Within the Golden Hour, and then he was in Dances at a Gathering. He's going to be in Voices of Spring in the last program. And he's got to juggle that with rehearsing in the studio, keeping himself fit, but also talking to Jean-Marc Poisson, the designer, um, also the lighting designer, Simon Benison, checking the music with Coom Kessels. There's a new orchestration of the last section of music, talking to me about the casting. There's always injuries happen. How are we going to replace one person because somebody is off? All of those things. So it's a tough time as, uh, when you're sort of um, in the middle of this storm of, of creativity, which is fantastic, but of course it's tough and it's hard work. But Valentina's got enough energy for three people, so that's fine.